and welcome back. I wanted to make this video today for anyone out there who is thinking of um, applying to medical school either in a few years or with this UCAS um, application process. Um, I just remember thinking back to my time applying and I didn't really get much help from my school, um, so my sixth form because I was one of the first people applying for medical school. Um, and I was just quite confused and there was a lot going on so I just wanted to go through some stuff today and if you have any questions just feel free to like comment down below and I can answer them for you so I'm answering um, I'm giving some advice as a um, graduate from medicine from UCL um, so I know a lot more of their system by a kind of have a general understanding of medical schools in the UK um, so you can just ask me anything really so the first thing I wanted to um, touch on was the type of medical school. So um, there are kind of two main types. One is the problem based kind of medicine and the other is um, the classical kind of, um, let's say classical kind of medicine. So problem based is um, from the first year onwards you're seeing patients um, alongside having lectures. So it's clinical medicine with um, kind of your normal lecture based medicine at the same time whereas kind of the classical courses which is what um, one of how UCL was was where you'd have two to three years of pre -cleans. so you'd go through like physiology, biochemistry and get all the kind of um, knowledge down and then you would move on to clinics specifically for the last three years so it kind of depends on what type of a learner you are and what kind of learning you enjoy. Um, I quite like the way that UCL was because it gave me time to understand everything before I started applying it and it gave you the time to get used to becoming a medical student before kind of just going straight into seeing patients, um, if that makes sense. So there's also five and six year courses. So um, usually as an undergraduate, medicine is five years. Um, there are some six year courses and the reason for this is the third year is usually an intercalated BSc. So um, what happens is during that year you usually take like a research project on, you do um, like a chosen module or chosen um, BSc of your choice and you actually can actually graduate that year and have uh, a degree so after the six years you end up having two degrees um, as compared as opposed to someone uh, just doing the five year and the way that, that that's different is that when you um, are at the end of medical school and you're applying for foundation program to become a junior doctor um, having an extra degree gives you extra points so when you then go on to rank your jobs it's a bit of an advantage so that's the way it works in that way um, for me I went to UCL UCL is six years however um, I only did five years because I applied as a graduate so I already had my BSc so I was able to skip the intercalated year and go straight into clinical years um, so that's a bit about that so if you're a graduate there are um, four year courses available as well um, kind of fast track so your summer holidays are a bit shorter and it's all kind of compressed in a little bit um, but there are options for um, students that have graduated from other courses before and uh, the second thing I wanted to touch on was um, personal statements so the way I went about it first was I kind of just wrote it and got a few people to read it and just literally copied and pasted onto UCAS and sent my form off Whereas when I did it the second time when I was applying as a graduate, I did the draft. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of books going around about personal statements for medicine. I think I brought one of them at the time. I can't really remember. Um, and I read through them and it was quite helpful actually because I didn't realise I was making some mistakes. Um, like cliche mistakes and using cliche sentences and not just, just tying in the whole thing. Because it is actually quite a short piece of writing if you think about it. So you have to be quite careful with... The way you write things and you know just don't waffle on etc so there is no way around it other than write it do a draft get people to read it um, get people who are already studying medicine or, or who have studied medicine to read it as well um, 
because that was quite useful that's what I did and I felt like they gave me really good insight um, and also don't lie in your personal statement I remember going to one of the interviews where one of the requirements was to give either certificates or some sort of documentation to prove everything that I'd written in my personal statement so don't think you can write about volunteering and kind of these experiences that you've done um, without actually like showing proof for them so never lie um, another thing which I wasn't quite prepared for at the time it was fairly new for me I guess was the entrance exams so not every medical school requires you to sit an entrance exam but there are some that do um, the two are the UK CAT and the BMAT and they're quite different in their format so uh, staff with the UK CAT um, it's usually like it's so computer based and it's usually given in centres where like people take their theory tests for their driving licence so you usually sit next to people doing their theory tests and it's like a four part um, exam <sighs> I don't really think it was testing anything and I don't feel like the score I got at the end really um, was any indication of how I was as a student so it was really silly but um, when I first did it I hardly did any preparation because I just wasn't aware of the exam until like lastminute.com um, so I, second time around I got books and um, I did lots of practice and some practice papers online I went through them I was just basically be prepared for the format because that's because it's time constricted you need to be able to um, do everything quickly um, so yeah just get yourself used to the format etc with that you can do so you're only allowed to do one sitting but you can do the sittings from like all the way from July to I think it's like um, October so you can actually sit it whenever you want um, but one sitting so when you get your score that's your score for the year and I mean if you don't like it if it's too low etc then the only way you can do anything about it is to, sh to repeat it next year um, so some of the medical schools use that and um, so some they use it in different ways so some of them have like a UK cap score cut off so if you don't meet that score then you don't get an interview some people use it to kind of make you more likely to get an interview but if you get a low score you're not exactly kind of um, eliminated straight away so every university is different so before I actually submitted my um, uh, my choices I actually called all of them up and said look this is my UK cat score do you have a specific cut off because if they do and you apply then that's like without even getting um, getting through to having your personal statement read etc it's just the whole choice that's gone to waste so make sure um, you look into that um, so the second exam is the BMAP and that's a written exam so it's of three components um, I think the first was like aptitude second bit was knowledge and the third bit was writing again I got like a book um, about the BMAT I don't remember which one it was I think they're kind of the same uh, the bit that I wanted to focus on was the writing um, because for UCL especially they wanted you to get a specific score on the writing section so I focused on that and um, yeah so I used some of my GCSE science books to revise for like the biology and the physics and chemistry etc and for that it's one sitting so everybody sits the exam on the same day and um, again some universities have cut off some they they all use it in a different way so um, before you do apply to a specific university make sure that um, you can but I think no with the BMAT you get your results after you've submitted your UCAS so I guess that's not that useful um, what else was I going to talk about uh, so okay and um, talking about so once you've gone through personal statement choosing your uh, the course um, entrance exam you've sat all of that you've gone through and you've got some interviews to come up um, there's different types of interviews so the one I attended um, at UCL was a panel so there was kind of lecturers um, one of the ones I attended had a medical student on there even and they were asking you questions and it's quite common to think oh they just ask you why are you studying medicine why do you want it etc but it's not really what they did is they got my personal statement and they went through it and they wanted me to go into detail about things um, and kind of just trigger kind of like conversation about some of the things I'd written 
um, on there and just my passion for things in general from what I remember it was a long time ago now but I do know that some medical schools have um, interviews where they do it in like groups and like stations so there'll be you'll be in like a group of four or five and you'll be asked to do tasks and there's people observing you or you'll be asked to um, kind of get involved in some sort of conversation with the patient um, so it's a bit more interactive and you work as a group um, so be prepared to go into either type of interview and yep yeah, so one other thing I wanted to say was um, some medical schools don't uh, accept your A-levels if you've taken more than two years to sit them so say for example you didn't do so well in chemistry and you wanted to boost your grade as soon as you boost your grades by doing retakes the universities aren't interested anymore so make sure you really do read the entry requirements um, for these universities because um, I made this mistake once where um, the entry requirement I didn't quite read the actual grades that they wanted so even before my application was even considered they just outright kind of um, declined it and um, it was unsuccessful etc so I just wasted a whole choice bear in mind you only get four anyway um, on something I could have chosen something different and yeah with don't get so bogged down with um, the medical school that you choose because they're all um, they're all under the umbrella of the GMC, so the General Medical Council, and they're all being regulated, etc. And um, when you come to the end of medical school and you're applying for jobs, everybody's points from their universities are the same. The only bits where it's a bit different is if you do a six year course where you get an extra um, BSc, so you can have extra points there if you have publications, etc. But essentially, um, a doctor. A medical student graduating in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, anywhere in England, London, they're basically seen as the same. So apply for a medical school that has the right type of, um, that's going to meet your learning needs. So again, problem based or the normal classical, you know, with the knowledge first and the clinical, um, the types of interviews that you're comfortable with. Um, if you don't want to pay for a certain entrance exam, make sure that the university you're applying for. Um, accepts a certain entrance exam etc and yeah that's it really I don't really know what else to say there's so much you can go on about and I can talk about UCL applying as a graduate um, the things I did to write my personal statement the types of volunteering that I did so if you have any questions feel free to write it below and um, I'll try to answer them as best I can